All right, well, <clears throat> could you explain to the viewers who Arthur Thompson was and how you first became aware of him? What one? Arthur Thompson. The like Senior or junior? Senior. Arthur Thompson, yeah. senior. Uh, the first time that I heard about Arthur Thompson, senior, as a kid, uh, there was an explosion that, that took place uh, roughly 150 yards to where my parents' house is. Uh, going out my parents' front door, going through a backfield, that was eyes on to Thompson's Proven Mill Road. So as the crow flies, it was less than two minutes. Uh, I never heard the explosion. We heard about it. Uh, and apparently it was uh, designed uh, uh, to assassinate Thompson Sr. because it was put under the passenger seat because you always had a driver. <clears throat> you get one of the mafia films that the driver doesn't turn up, the guy gets whacked. That's probably what, what, no. I'm not saying what happened, because I think the bomb was already planted the night before. Uh, his mother-in-law, who's absolutely innocent, it's got none at all to do. Out and 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 Arthur Thompson Senior decided to take her home. Uh, I don't know whether they moved. It's a mercury towel, or he put the indicator on, but the bomb exploded underneath the passenger seat. Killed her outright. Uh, so that was the big news about who Arthur Thompson was. And then uh, uh, the senior. And then growing up, uh, my dad had always said a few choice words. Not again. It was always warnings, but as kids, do you think you know better and all the rest of it? But he was, uh, <clears throat> he was regarded as the figurehead. Uh, Never known to us as the Godfather. Nobody ever said, oh, let's go and see the Godfather. <laughs> if, if they did, they would go to see a movie. Yeah. <laughs> he was either old Arthur, old man, AT, the boss, whatever his name was. He never had any saying, oh, go and visit the Godfather, man. Matter of fact, I don't even think he liked it, uh, at, at fact, because he's his solicitor later on, Joe Boutrami had gave something and said, that's the media spin that put on him. So the media gave him the name. I think it was a bit bad, I swear, but he played up to it a few times as well, I'd imagine. So when I got to, to know him personally, spoke to him personally, uh, there was a, a situation involved uh, with one of his nephews. Uh, I don't know if it was a stolen car, but his nephew was driving a vehicle that hot pedestrian that ha my young sister happened to see it and I, apparently I think she gave a statement to the police and different things like that so when I told my dad about it he said go and you sort that so go over and see the Arthur tell him I've sent you run and there'll be no statements for this family uh, when I explained that Arthur Thompson senior then invited me to the problem I won to see him later on, not for a drink, but he gave us a carton of cigarettes. Mum and Dad never smoked, but he gave us a carton of cigarettes and a bottle of whiskey to take back to my dad. So it was like, thanks for that, and that's how we deal with it. That, that, that's my first uh, meeting with him. And then you got approached to work for him? I got approached to work with him after that. I was probably <clears throat> 16, 17, and how it came to the attention was during that particular time, we go back to the bullying. Uh, there, there was, the, the, funny enough, the, when I say funny enough, I don't mean to be funny about it, but the family who was involved with the feud between Arthur Thompson, the bombs and all the rest, happened to be the younger generation that was bullying me. So the the things that I dashed out uh, was uh, horrific. Scalped somebody, somebody's throat got cut, somebody got really, really sorted out. And then when you, when Thompson found out about this, it became my enemy's his enemy, sort of thing. And it was, it was put to me at one time. Uh, what are you doing all this for? They, they couldn't understand why it was all going. I said, fucking bullying at school. 
And that's when I was asked about, do you want to do something similar for finances rather than doing all this one? <laughs> yeah. And I thought, you know, is that the way it goes? And he's going, yeah, go ahead, crack on with it. <laughs> and uh, that's when I met Arthur Thompson Jr. He just got released for the uh, for prison sentence. Was he a bit of a fuck? Who? Uh, the junior, Arthur Thompson Jr. It, uh, to be fair, I'd like to say a lot of things about him, but he's dead. But what, what I do remember about him is, I'm not going to be disrespectful, other than the fact that uh, he lived off his dad's reputation. One of the first things that I never got on him about uh, was uh, he's we've come out the house one day, he's got a can of CS gas, <clears throat> and there's an old fella walking up towards us. He went, oh, I'll wait to see if this works. <laughs> Sp- sprayed it in this guy's face and collapsed. And I thought, that fucking arsehole. But he knew everything about firearms. He taught me a lot about firearms. We used to make with air and ammunition and loads of other stuff. He was very clever, but mad at the same time. Uh, I think because his dad and he's creating an empire and all the rest of it. So uh, he was tolerated because he, who his dad was, and that was the main thing. Because, yeah, they portray him in the film as being a bit of a Billy Big Bollocks. Uh, that was probably a mild version of <laughs> <laughs> that I was. Uh, yeah. the, the fact that even being portrayed in the movie, in real life, people say he never wore a suit. There's photographs of him sitting in his shirt and tie. There's people that want to sympathise with him and different things like that. My, my view's t- entirely different. He was dangerous, financially dangerous. He could pay a lot of money to different people to get things done. 